Here we're going to be looking at a grandfather clock. This is a Hermely weight-driven clock. It has a set of three weights. The one in the center drives the clock movement, and the one on the left drives the hourly chime, and the one on the right does the quarter hour chimes. This clock is about seven feet tall, and uh, it's made out of walnut. And I'm going to pull it away from the wall so we can uh, take a look inside. And I'll have to stop it to do that. These clocks are very sensitive to um, being moved and uh, they have to be leveled when you uh, put one into position. And you also have to um, be sure to put it in a place where the floor is solid. If, they're, if the floor flexes a lot when you walk by it, it's liable to make the, stop, the clock stop working. So I'll show you, it's got a, uh, a door here you can open to raise the weight. And the way you wind this clock is you just pull on a chain and it pulls the weights up. So there's three chains you have to pull to lift up the uh, three weights. And the weights are different weights, so you have to be careful if you take the weights off to put them back in the right order. And here's the, uh, you get to the face, and this is where you can uh, set the time. And you, you only want to advance the clock, you never want to uh, move it backwards. And it has uh, panels here to remove to get inside to the internal workings. I'll, I'll move the clock away from the wall so you, you can take a look inside. The way these uh, panels work, you can see there's a tall notch here at this top and a, and a shallow notch and you just simply put the, and there's also a channel routed into the top and into the bottom and you simply slide this up into place and let it drop. And, and that's all there is to it. That's all that's holding that in. So looking into the, uh, the right side of the clock, you see the, the melody hammers. There are um, eight of them. Sometimes you have to bend these uh, brass pins to get them to, to hammer correctly. This one here sounds like it needs to be uh, adjusted slightly. What you want to do is have it so that it doesn't rest on the, the rod. There, these are uh, chimed rods here. And this side plays the melody. And this selector switch here selects between the three chimes of uh, Westminster, St. Michael, and Whittington. And you can see how it, uh, there's three sets of uh, discs here, and the discs have uh, pins on them that lift these hammers as it goes around. And you never want to change that while it's playing, but See if I can make it work again. I just have to move it about 15 minutes. I'll zoom in so you can get a better view of that, of what's going on in there. And on one of my clocks, I was able to uh, uh, remove this entire uh, program disc setup and shaved off all the pins on one song and re-welded them in to play another song that I chose. 
And uh, that took uh, quite a few months to figure that out and, and implement it. But I'm glad I did it. It was an interesting process, project to work on. And now I'll show you the other side of the clock um, that has the hourly chimes. It's kind of the same as this one, only it doesn't have, it only has four chime rods on it. And so taking a look at this side, this is the left side. And it has, you can see four chimes and they're all together. And they just strike once an hour. And they strike one time for every hour. I'll zoom in so you can get a closer look at that. Here you can see the four chime rods on this side and uh, the other side is the, the eight. They're shaped like a V. They come down behind the clock movement.